Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Dan and today I'll be going over 10 sleeper OP builds that you have to try out in patch 10.2. This patch is the very second one of season 10, which means that it's the perfect time to start practicing these builds and trying them out in ranked. And also guys, today's question of the day is, what rank do you want to get this season and how do you plan on achieving it? Let us know all your answers in the comments down below. And one last thing, are you getting ganked in your own lane? Constantly getting demolished? Don't worry, we got you covered. Whether you're looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Night Blue, Bunny Foo Foo, Box Box, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start improving right now. All right, with that all being said, let's jump into the video. Starting off the list number 10, we have Man Immune Fiora. This one is quite tricky to play, but it's extremely effective once it gets going. It might be quite awkward during the early stages of the game because you'll have to play safe instead of constantly dueling your opponent like the standard Fiora playstyle. The reason why this build is so strong is because the bonus max mana from Presence of Mind combined with Mura Mana and Fiora's auto resets allows you to do a ton of damage. For runes, you'll go Conqueror, Triumph, Legend, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras, followed by Sorcery Second for Transcendence and Gathering Storm. Then for items, you'll rush Tiamat, which later builds into Ravenous Hydra, then Man Immune, Triforce, Tabbies, Steric's Gage, and Death's Dance. A lot of pro players have been trying this build out in solo queue, and our analysts highly recommend you start abusing this before it becomes well known. Next up at number 9, we have a build from Korea, which is Talia Support. So recently in the KR server, our analysts have been noticing that Talia has seen some more play in the bot lane. This is mainly due to the rank 1 Korean player hitting Challenger playing only Talia ADC. However, we've also noticed that a lot of pros have been trying her out support as well. The reason why this works so well is because engaged support like Nautilus and Rakan get hard punished by Talia's E, followed by an easy disengage with her W. For runes, you'll go Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ravenous Hunter, followed by Precision Second for Triumph and Coup de Gras. Then for items, you'll go Shard of True Ice, Hextech GLP, Sork Boots, Morello, Zanyas, and Eliandris. Give this build a try, but make sure you practice a lot before jumping into ranked. You have to master the timing of her W and E against other supports and gauge tools to utilize her kit to the fullest. Coming in at number 8, we have Rumble in the Jungle. So this build used to see a lot of play during the early days of League of Legends. I'm talking like way back in early season 3. But recently, it's been rising in popularity again. A lot of the meta junglers right now actually struggle against Rumble in the 1v1 and are often caught off guard by how strong he is. In addition to that, Rumble's greatest strength is his teamfight potential during those dragon fights, which are vital to winning more games. For runes, you'll go Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Ravenous Hunter, followed by Inspiration Second for Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. However, we've noticed that pros in Korea also like going Sorcery Second for Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking, so it's all down to personal preference. And for items, you'll go Runic Echoes, Sork Boots, Morello, Zanyas, Leandries, and Avoid Staff. I've actually tried this one out myself, and I'm addicted to this new jungle playstyle. Next up at number 7, we have a sleeper OP build for Kog'Maw. Kog hasn't been doing so well in the meta recently, but he's been thriving with a new build. Instead of going on hit or tank bursting items like Blade of the Ruined King or Wit's End, some pro players have been hitting the pedal to the metal and going full crit. For runes, you'll take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Bloodline and Coup de Gras, followed by Inspiration Second for Free Boots and Biscuits. Then for items, you'll rush a Storm Razor into Rage Blade, Berserkers, Runans, Infinity Edge, and a Phantom Dancer. I honestly much prefer this build over the standard Bork style, and I'm surprised at how unpopular this is. Having that Storm Razor really helps Cog out during his weaker early stages and allows him to spike better into the mid game. Coming in at number 6, we have a new build for Graves Jungle. Whenever you see Graves being played in the jungle, it's usually one of two styles. Either you go Dark Harvest or Electrocute with Lethality items, or you go Fleet Footwork with the standard Cleaver. However, in patch 10.2, there's been a Graves build which has been rising in popularity, which is Hail of Blades. This is most notably used by junglers Mujin and Mowgli, who are very good Graves players. For runes, you'll go Hail of Blades, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, followed by Sorcery Second for Nimbus Cloak and Water Walking. Then for items, you'll go Red Smite Warriors, Berserkers, Umbral Glaive, Yomus, Maw of Malmordius, and a GA. The build is very versatile though, and you can pretty much go any route with the Hail of Blades. We've seen pros build Black Cleaver, Phantom Dancer, IE, Rapid Fire Cannon, Storm Razor, Dusk Blade, and many more. Point is, any standard Graves items will work, so build according to the circumstances of your game. Since we're at the halfway point, here's a recap of the first five builds we've mentioned. 
take a few seconds to screenshot or write them down anywhere. Next up, number five, we have Sona in the mid lane and also the bottom lane. So at the start of patch 10.2, Sona received a massive buff, which increased the movement speed bonus on her E by a ton. She's running around the map at extreme speeds, which has inspired some Sona mains to play her mid or ADC. For runes, you'll go Airy, Mana Flow Band, Celerity, and Water Walking, followed by Inspiration Second for free boots and biscuits. For items, you'll actually want to build Shard of True Ice despite being in the solo lane or ADC position because you're going to be zoned a lot. Having this item will help you catch up in gold and you should allow your supporter jungler to tax a lot of CS. After that, you get Sork Boots, Archangels, Lich Bane, Zanyas, and a Death Cap. One thing to note about this build is that it works incredibly well with Taric in the bottom lane, so pick up a duo partner and try that out. You'll be surprised at how fast your new E makes you. On to number four, we got a build for the newly reworked Silas in the top lane. Since Silas has been changed for a few weeks now, most of his builds are pretty set in stone. Players either opt for Conqueror or Electrocute, but one notable innovator from Korea named Naguri has been trying out a new build with him. For runes, you'll go Omnistone, Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight, followed by Sorcery Second for Transcendence and Gathering Storm. Then for items, you'll go GLP, Into Sork Boots, Zanya's Death Cap, Void Staff, and a Morello. This build is super uncommon, but trust me, if Naguri is spamming it in solo queue, then it means it's quite strong. For those who are unaware, Naguri is responsible for single-handedly shifting the top lane meta during last year's World Championships due to his innovative rune choices and playstyles. Hop onto this new trend before everyone becomes aware of it. Alright, next up at number 3, we have a sleeper OP build for Orn support. Although Orn is primarily played as a top laner in the western regions, he's actually seeing a ton of plays as support in the eastern ones. Korea supports absolutely love playing Orn support, and they're convinced that this pick is overpowered. In fact, our analysts even took the time to play a few games of Orn support and ranked, and they completely killed it with a 6-0 record. He does extremely well into a lot of the engaged supports like Nautilus and Leona, thanks to his W making him unstoppable. In addition to that, his passive allows him to upgrade your ADC's items as well as your own, which adds even more power to this bot lane. For runes, you'll go Aftershock, Demolish, Second Wind, and Overgrowth, followed by Inspiration Second for Cosmic Insight and Perfect Timing. Then, for items, you'll rush a Bulwark of the Mountain into Merc Treads, Redemption, Gargoyles, Locket, and a Knight's Vow. If you main support, then we highly recommend you give this a try. Trust me, you will not regret it. And coming in at number 2, we have a build which couples really well with the Orn support, which is Irelia Botlane. Although this may seem pretty troll at first, it's actually a disgustingly strong kill lane if you're skilled with this champion. We noticed that players really like duoing Irelia with Taric or Orn because the kill threat is so strong. However, this pick can also work well with standard engaged supports like Nautilus and Leona due to their insane lockdown. For runes, you'll go Press the Attack, Triumph, Tenacity, and Last Stand, followed by Inspiration Second for Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic. Then for items, you'll Triforce, Ninja Tabbies, Ravenous Hydra, Wit's End, Steric Gage, and a GA. One thing to note about this pick is that your level 1 is extremely weak, but you can immediately kill your opponents at level 2. Have your support help you push the wave to hit level 2 first, then engage right away for some easy kills. If you manage to secure that kill, then you'll be able to snowball the lane extremely easily since you'll be able to lethal them whenever your ultimate is available. And lastly at number 1, we got another build for Talia, except this time it's in the middle lane. Talia mid is definitely nothing new, but one small twist about this build is the runes you'll be using. Unlike the standard Electrocute or Dark Harvest, we've been noticing a few players opting to go Phase Rush instead. At first glance, you might think this build is a bit niche, but it's actually extremely effective against specific matchups. Since you can kite so easily with your Q, having that extra movement speed will heavily favor you in trades if played correctly. What should happen is you'll be able to poke them out consistently and then kite backwards with Phase Rush so they can never catch up to damage you back. For runes, you'll go Phase Rush, Mana Flow Band, Celerity, and Water Walking, followed by Domination Second for Ravenous Hunter and Cheap Shot. Then, for items, you'll go GLP, Sork Boots, Rylai's, Leandri's, Morello, and Azania's. This build is perfect for players who enjoy roaming around the map and making plays while also being a very strong backline damage dealer. One tip we will give for anyone trying this build is to hard shove your lane constantly and help out your jungler. Your Q makes it extremely easy to take dragons, so try to pressure the bottom half of the map as much as possible. Here's a recap of the 5 builds we've mentioned from 5 to 1. Take a few seconds to screenshot or write them all down. 
And that's gonna be it for our 10 sleeper OP builds for patch 10.2. If you enjoyed watching the video, then please hit that like, comment, and subscribe button to be notified of our next vid. Also, make sure to check out ProGuides.com if you wanna see huge improvements in your rank. That's all for now. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you on the Rift.